Welcome to episode 15 of Mia Mina Talks. I'm your host, Mia Mina. Thanks for joining me in my library. In this episode, I'm telling the well-known story of the events of the Ides of March when Julius Caesar was killed with my own little twist. Now, let me whisper in your ears. The moon fills the sky with the last waxing gibbous ready for the full moon upon the next night. My mistress and her stepdaughter were finally enraptured in their dreams. Both were having a fitful night. I knew their dreams were bad omens of the Ides. I'd had my own dreams and visions. I walked around to set up the incense, hoping to calm their dreams. As I passed by the bed the master slept upon, having set up the incense on the mistress's side and each side at the foot of the bed, I found the master not quite asleep. His hands moved to grasp my hips and pull me closer. I almost burned him with the incense ash. He chuckled as he let me continue, (laughs) when his wife moaned painfully beside him. I felt the promise of another time as his hands traced up my stola against my hips and thighs under my pala. I finished my task, then left the room silently to do the same at the young mistress's bed. Once finished, I made my way to my own small room to sleep close by both my mistress's beds in case they needed me in the night. I had not slept well for nights. I was racked more by the spirits than my mistress's, but I was more accustomed to them. The sun had been dark for the last few days, keeping the sky almost as dark as night. Ill-boding dogs and birds caused all sorts of trouble with animals and homes on the outskirts of the city. I had chased several birds out of the house of Caesar myself upon my mistress's orders. These were heralds of disaster. There was something horrible coming. I lay there dozing in the light sleep of restlessness before I was in the vapors again. The spirits were surrounding me, whispering with words I couldn't actually understand yet. As I swayed between their mist, I started to understand. Blood comes for the conqueror, who has risen to the highest state. The eyes call for punishment, punishment. to the afflict he has called. I looked at them, still feeling the faint slightness, which I knew would one day pull me to join them permanently. My voice didn't even seem to be mine as I spoke. But what of the glory he has brought them? Should he not be excused for the love he has brought to them? Oh, little one, you know that is not the truth of this. He would declare himself emperor. Rome allows no monarchy to reach above the gods. He does not. Don't try to bargain for him. It is not your place. As one who has suffered from his control as well, the gods have already decided. It is already spun in the web. The thread is set. I obeyed. I always obeyed. But this time it would not be my savior. The beast came for me. It dragged me from the spirits and the vapors. I could feel my blood leaving my body as it pulled me into the woods. As I started to return to myself, I started to fight the claws and teeth as they came at me. It wished to eat me until it could feast on Caesar. Once in the woods, it howled into the night as it stood over me. This called down the birds on me as well. They were eating me as I tried to fight them off. I was losing the battle. I was dying. I couldn't fight them much longer. When I started to hear my name, I felt hands upon me between the talons and the claws. I felt the teeth and beaks tearing my skin and muscles from me. Several hours had passed after the deep of night, with the last gibbous filling the window with light when Cyrus crept into my room. His hands woke me quickly. I didn't realize I had fallen so deep into sleep. The dream vision was so real. I was feeling my life drain away. I was startled as I opened my eyes, still within the hold of the dream. My arms were still fighting for freedom from the grip of the dream. Nay, nightmare. The old man caught my wrist to hold me still. Tatiana, he said, softly trying to reach my mind. It's a dream. 
Come back to the waking world. Your lady, Calpurnia, has need of you. She is awakened in such a state. Mistress Julius sent me for you to come calm her. Finally, back in the waking world, I blinked my eyes at Cyrus. Yes, yes, I said, still groggy, as I took a hold of my sheet to sit. I shall be behind you. No time for your false modesty, girl, he said, rebuking me sharply. Put on your stola and come. There will be time for more later when she is calm. Lord Caesar is beside her with Mistress Julia, though I dare say the younger isn't really much better. Seems she too had ill dreams. I barely had the stola over my body before he pulled me from my small room into the master antechamber. I found both mistresses pleading and begging with the master to stay from the senate on the eye. The senate could do without him on such an ill omen day. Mistress Julia saw Cyrus pulling me into the antechamber. She flew across the room, pleading with me for a reading to confirm her and Lady Calpurnia's dreams. When she grabbed my hands, I instantly knew what both mistresses had dreamed of. She dragged me over to Lady Calpurnia, pleading with me while almost throwing me into Lord Caesar. He caught me carefully, settling me beside him and in front of his wife. She grabbed my hands, kissing them as if I was the only way to save the master. I dreamed Julius was covered in blood and my arms dying. Then he went on to leave the house. The pediment of the house collapsed upon him and again he died in my arms covered in blood. Tell him, child, tell him. He can't leave today. The eyes are not safe for him. The sinner isn't safe for him today. She said, pleading urgently with me as I watched her eyes and listened. Remind him of Spurnian's warnings. Tell him, child. Tell him. I nodded my head with her pleading urgent before he spoke. Tell me what you know of this Tatania. What have the spirits said which will calm my Calpurnia and Julia? I closed my eyes. I turned my head towards him. I didn't dare look upon him yet. I knew what I would see if I looked up at him with her hands on mine and Mistress Julius's hands on my shoulders. This is when he spoke. If you have words for me, child, let me hear them. I fear for my lady's minds in this matter. Tell me what you see. It's much worse than your ladies and the Etruscan Hutterspeck says. The Senate holds your betrayal and doom this Ides. Your most loved will come to draw your blood and cut your life this day, I said, keeping my eyes from looking at him. Then it's settled, he said, motioning to Cyrus. Bring me Antony. I shall send him to the Senate to tell them Caesar shall not come today. It was settled before the sun was up. There would be no doom for Caesar that day. Yet when I raised my head upon Caesar's command, I still saw blood covering his face as I had since he returned. There was some danger yet for him, some betrayal which would spill his blood. I kept it to myself as I was sent to get refreshments for the three. A blackbird flew by the opening of my room when I went to retrieve my pala. I felt my legs weaken beneath me. Nothing would save Caesar from the Ides of March. The die was already cast and in play. Welcome to the end of the video. Thank you for listening to the whole story. While this is a historical fiction, I tried not to focus completely on historical facts. Of course, I can't ignore them completely, but I can make them just a part of the story. The focus of this story was more the young servant girl who is telling the story and what she is going through. I found this very educational to write. I learned details I didn't know about, not just the event, but about ancient Rome. Let me know if there's anything else you would like to know about this story in the comments below. While you're down there, please give the video a like and share it out. If you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you are notified when I upload new videos. A short reminder, I have a Teespring store with t-shirts and hoodies and mugs and masks and other items to choose from. I've added the link below, so check it out. Get your own Mia Mina swag. All purchases and donations go to making the channel better. I want to say thank you to all of you who have subscribed. I appreciate your faith in me and enjoyment of my content. I love and appreciate all of you. Thank you to everyone who has been so welcoming, supportive, and helpful. Until we meet again, have a wonderful day or night, and be safe.